IPXers, welcome to the Things Conference 2025, where behind me, I'm on the Edge Impulse booth and a car racing demo is just calling my name. Now I promise there's some engineering behind it. They've got two models running simultaneously on one piece of hardware. You're gonna wanna know about it. Let's go race. I'm here with Jim at the Edge Impulse booth. Now we've got a really cool demo behind us, Jim. Would you walk us through it? Sure, so today we're showing off a really nice fun demo uh, and we've got two main elements to it. The first is this overhead camera, which is doing object detection on a Rubik Pi here, which is a piece of Qualcomm hardware. And we're running our FOMO model, which is a super high speed, faster objects, more objects detection model. So it is faster object, more object. Faster objects, more Not objects. For only MOOC once. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then uh, what we're doing is we're tracking the cars going around the track here. Uh, and then on the cars themselves, we have little on-device BLE sensors. These are Arduino Nikla Sense MEs, and they've got little IMUs in them that are doing uh, crash detection. So when the car crashes, we're reporting that back over BLE to the central Rubik Pi. Um, and then that's it. We time your lap and uh, the winner gets a Rubik Pi at the end of the day. Oh, okay. So I would like to win a Rubik Pi, pretty maybe expensive piece of hardware, something I would like for free. That'd be pretty awesome. Sure. So we've got two things going here. We've got your, your vision object detection model, which is timing us. Yep. And right now, George G has five laps at 13.66 seconds. <laughs> now that is the time to beat. In addition to that, you've got a model running on this Arduino Nikola product. Exactly. Which is telling us if, uh, what are the uh, classes in here? We've got crashed, driving. Crashed, driving, idle. Okay. So, yeah. I'm going to guarantee you I'm going to spend most of that time in crash. Jim, shall we give this a go? Sure, let's give it a go. You're blue, I'm red. Let's go. Okay, you ready? All right, well, Three, I'll just come to you. Two, two, one, go. Oh, he's way faster than me already. How many laps are we doing? Five. Five. Come on, go, you good thing. Oh, oh, this is my time. Get off the track. <laughs> what lap are we up to? Uh, Harry, cameraman, where oh, are we? We finished. We finished. Oh, oh we got so close. Oh, it's neck and neck. By 20 milliseconds, we've been divided by yeah, my lord. Yeah, I think lord. I won, unfortunately. No, there okay. we go, you know I built the demo. Good game. <laughs> it's his demo at the end of the day. Okay, I would like to know some more about this demo. Sure. So tell me about the hardware that we're running here. So here we've got the Rubik Pi, which is a Thundercom uh, development kit, and it's running a Qualcomm 6490 chip in there, which is a Cortex-A processor with a QNN accelerator for AI. Fantastic. So, uh, it's also got a GPU on there for, for other stuff. So it's a really powerful bit of kit there. That is powerful. Look at um, size that with the GPU and, yeah. and the NPU. Is that the correct sort of term? NPU, is, yeah, NPU yeah. GPU, and NPU. Perfect. And it's really nice. It's ping compatible with Raspberry Pi, so you can put um, Raspberry Pi hats on it as well mm. uh, and use the cameras from there. Um, and on that, we're running basically a whole web server which runs the whole race system as well as our AI model. So we've got two models and an AI and a web server yeah. running on this one piece of hardware. Yeah, and then on these, we're actually running the uh, time series models themselves mm. for doing the crash detection. They're just reporting back whether there's been a crash over Bluetooth. Would you consider this sort of uh, an industrial solution that people can go ahead and, and deploy right now? Is this more of like a sort of beginner? So the Rubik Pi thing? is a really great starting point if you want to start to develop industrial solutions because mm -hmm. the chip inside it is an industrial chip. So okay. it's one of the Qualcomm Dragonwing series of chips, mm -hmm. but in a form factor that is really open and really easy to get started mm -hmm. with. So it's great for prototyping. And then you can move to using a system or module from Qualcomm for your production kind of uh, uh, system. Okay, yeah. so I want to talk a little bit more about your process in training the vision model. I had a go, I, Edge Impulse is so easy to start with, genuinely, it is so easy to get up. You can just go onto their website, take some pictures with your phone and train your first model. It was really fun to do, but I put some errors in there. Would you have any tips or, or run me through your process for training this model? I mean, all of these objects that you've got, I mean, we've got a Corvette here, We've got some flavor of, of Ford. Um, what is this, the Mustang by the looks of it? Now, th these are all similar. I'd say the only real differentiator is the color yeah. as such. So how can you tell the difference between, for instance, uh, this Ford Mustang and this computer mouse? Because honestly, they look quite similar to, a, to an AI model. Yeah, so it's all about the data and it's all about how you frame the problem that you're trying to solve. Okay. Um, so if we look on the right here, we've got a little bit of a snapshot of the data set that I collected. Mm -hmm. And you can see that I've labeled all of the cars and uh, I've got a bunch of data there, about a thousand images. And that's really the key starting point. It's quite a simple setup. We've got a track and a background, and the only real difference between each of these images is the location and type of car right, that's available. Okay. Um, so by giving it loads of data of all of this stuff, we're able to uh, 
basically find that pattern. Yeah. But then as you say, if you put a mouse in there, how do you make sure it's not going to detect the mouse as one of our classes? Oh, it's a very quick mouse. Exactly. Like and that's all about adding variation into your data set. So one of the things that I did when I was training this model was I made sure that uh, I added a few things into the data set that I didn't label that weren't just the background. Yes. So one out? of the things I did, uh, my cat actually. Uh, <laughs> You've added your cat to this data yeah, set. Yeah, I've got a great <laughs> video that I shared with my colleagues of my cat walking into frame. And I thought, oh, great, I'll capture some that data is now. Good. So Robust that training data. It's cat proof. Uh, but that's one of the things you have to think about where you're trying to develop a model that's really robust for mm. a real world application mm -hmm. is you want to think about what your model is trying to detect, but also what it's not trying to detect. Mm -hmm. So collecting data from all of those different classes. And the same applies for the time series model that's on this car. Uh, I wanted to detect whether the car was driving or crashed or idle, but I needed to make sure that, you know, when it's on the table and I'm knocking on the table like that, mm. that's part of the idle class, yes. not just when it's completely still, because I don't want it to detect um, me knocking into the table as a crash, for example. Yes. So it's all about thinking about holistically about your data set and what you're trying to detect and what you're not trying to detect. Perfect. So, Jim, you've got a cat-proof model here <laughs> that I've seen work very well. How would you recommend people go out and start with Edge Impulse? So Edge Impulse is a great place to start because it's totally free to sign up for. If you head to edgeimpulse.com forward slash sign up, you can get a free developer account today and start developing with our very generous uh, compute allowance and create your own image models or models for tiny devices like this. Uh, and then if you have a production use case that you want to start exploring how you kind of bring to production quicker, you can speak to our team uh, and get access to our enterprise platform, which adds a whole lot more compute, new features, and extra models. Uh, and that's really where you can sort of start to accelerate towards a real production system. I'm very passionate about Edge Impulse because I feel it's done something for us electronics engineers that we couldn't have had without a master's degree in, in AI on top of our degree. I mean, you've abstracted away all of the difficult parts about training your, your models. I mean, everybody remembers doing something like this in MATLAB, right? I mean, how terrible was that? It is so easy to get started with Edge Impulse. I mean, you literally can go onto your phone, you can take pictures of something yeah. and, and create your own data set, and then you can run that on model. Say you get something like a Nikola Vision, you can go ahead, quantize that, chuck it on that. It's such an easy platform to run, Jim. Thanks so much for having me at the booth today. Thank you. Thanks for racing. <laughs>